Yo guys, welcome back to another Call of Wild the Angler video. In today's video, we're going to be getting out and showcasing where and how I caught my um, diamond sweetfish. We're going to be showing the location. The tactic that I was told and read on the official Discord service is a little bit different to the one I was using at the start, but I ended up using John Johnson's, if I'm saying his name right, big up to you. I ended up using the method that he put into the official Discord service, but I'll show both methods and you can decide which one you want to use. But we're going to get out there and showcase this brand new spot for the sweetfish, guys. Um, so if you do enjoy this kind of content on the angler, consider subscribing to the channel. Join our Discord. Link's in the description. More importantly, sit back and enjoy the rest of the video and I'll catch you in stream next time. Peace. Right, before we go, if you follow this step-by-step, step, the gears, um, and follow the video step-by-step, step, I can promise you within the hour, you will have a diamond sweet fish. Within the hour, if you follow step-by-step step on this video, guys, you're going to start off by wanting to take a basic float setup. I've got 11-pound monofilament on this, size 7 hook, and a blood worm. The third rod you're going to want to take is I've got the Brass Monkey, the Bergman Reel, 8-pound monofilament, a size 5 jig head, and the tube that fits the jig head. And then on the third and final rod, any rod you really like. I've got a big rod for this one, a size five hook and door. And then we're gonna head out to the spot and I'm just gonna show you how crazy this method is. But before you go, make sure you fill up on sweet corn, pearl, pearl barley and pellets as well, guys. Right guys, arriving at the spot. First thing you wanna be doing is throwing some sweet corn out. I'm trying to get my sweet corn between like 28 foot and 30 foot out. And uh, between 25 and 30 foot out and then cast your jig out and reel it across the surface while jigging for these guys. It might take a few minutes, it might take a few seconds or a few casts to start getting it back because we've just come, we're just like loaded into the session here. But just give it a minute, there we go, we've got one going for it as we speak now. And you reel your jig across the surface guys. Don't let the jig sink and jig it back. Now John Johnson was saying on the official Discord servers, his method works, I've tried it believe me, I caught my diamond on a um, blood worm. But the method that I'm using here, the bites are so much quicker. Um, and I've arrived here midday. So I've arrived here at um, 12 o'clock in like midday. And my diamond came around 1500. But I have had gold. I'm telling you, can you see what I mean? These are all good silvers. And you know how hard it's been to catch silver, um, sweet fish. Even the silvers have been hard to catch. So I've had multiple golds now, which we can. I'll showcase one in a few minutes. And then we'll showcase the diamond. But I want to talk through both methods. So this method works beautifully. And the method that John Johnson was saying was it was fishing with a seven hook and blood worm over the top of his bait for a little while and then switch into a, um, a size five with dough on it and catch, starting to catch some silvers. But I find that I'm catching more sweet fish by using the jig and the size five jig head with the tube. So I'm cancelling out having to cast your um, float out and wait for the bite indications. And sometimes the sweet fish swim away from the bait so they'll come in they'll have a look at your bait and then they'll turn and like go off the bait they won't even bite and you don't know unless you're zoomed right in but with this method casting on top once again jigging back across the surface you're getting a bite every single cast and i'm getting bites while i'm talking to you guys now and very rarely do i reel it back in without getting a bite as i'm talking very rarely i reel it back in and this is a silver the silver only hook so i would highly recommend trying this method and then I'll show you the method that he, um, John Johnson was saying. And then we'll get into showing you the diamond that I've got. We'll show you the golds that I've got and then the diamond that I've got. Uh, and then we'll show the location off, guys. But the methods, both of them work fantastic. This one's just a little bit quicker, meaning you're getting your bites quicker. You're getting through more fish. And I feel like the more fish you get through, the more chance you've got of that diamond or them golds coming through. But this sweet corn's running out now. So when this one's out, we'll start using the seven blood worm method and we'll see what um, comes of it. With the setup that I'm using, if you follow the exact setup that I'm using, Half tension is a silver. Half tension on the exact jig setup that I'm using is a good silver. Between two thirds and three quarters is a diamond. So that gives you a little bit. If you follow the setups ideally, and if you miss the setups, you can just go back in the video and just watch, especially the jig setup. Follow the jig setup. Bang on. Right, we're going to go over now and talk on over the method that John Johnson was using, which is a size seven bloodworm for a little bit. So you cast the bloodworm out, sit and wait for your bites, and you can just cut. You put both of them together here and you can see how much quicker it is with the jig head. Granted, I did get it on the bloodworm eventually, but that's because I thought I'll fish with a bloodworm for a bit and sit back and relax. But I would have had him on the jig if I was casting my jig out, but I didn't want to cast a jig out no more because I'd had that many. But can you see the difference between waiting from a jig to now waiting for him to bite on the floor? It's completely different. We'd have had two fish by the time you've had one fish. I can see him going off the bait there. You can see him swimming off the bait, some of them fish down there. They're playing with it a lot here. That's what, that's the issues I've had with these guys is they play with the bait a lot. So if you take that back in now, 
and I'll show you just how good this method is. Sounds too jiggered. And listen, I'm not pulling any anything away from John Johnson, the official Discord servers. He's been a lifesaver for me today. I'm just, I just know how difficult these guys are to buy on a float. They're extremely difficult to buy on a float. They take such a long time. And when it's night time and you're over the top of them, you can see how uninterested they are. That's a big one. You can see just how uninterested they are in the float compared to what they are with this jig head. And you're not really jigging as well. Realistically, all you're doing is just reeling the jig across the surface. But make sure you've got your jigging an animation going at the same time. Let's see. We'll get a couple more fish, and then I really, really want to showcase this diamond to you guys. It's been... I broke my microphone. I broke the microphone doing it. I, I think I shouted that loud, the microphone broke. So my reaction is a little bit delayed because I had to re-plug the microphone in. But <laughs> it is what it is. We run with it. Let's go. I'm so chuffed. I'm so chuffed. I've fished so hard for these for the past few days. I wouldn't even like to look how many I've caught. But anyway, cut to the gold. So, just a quick summary. A size 7 blood worm, a size 5 jig head with a tube, and a size 5 hook with door. You can either try the method of um, fishing with a, a size 7 blood worm for a little while, and then after you've caught a few on the size 7 blood worm, start casting out your 5 um, door, which is a silver only hook. Or you can just put your sweet corn out and go straight at it with the size 5 jig head with the um, tube on. And start at midday. Um, and I got my fish around 1500. Anyway, cut through the gold, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. Yeah, this is the point where the microphone broke, guys. I don't know what happened. It, uh, there was some malfunction with my microphone, but I, I, as soon as I hooked into it, I could tell it was a huge fish just from the tension. I knew it was going to be my diamond, but well, I'll cut to now when I plug the microphone back in. You can see how what the, you can see just how elated I was that I'd actually just caught that thing. But I'll just fast forward it a little tiny bit to where uh, my microphone's plugged back in, guys. I apologize for this. I do apologize, but yeah, I'll cut to it now. Let's go. My mic broke. I broke my mic. Let's go. What? Nice. Big up to John Johnston on Discord, guys. What a find. What a find. Let's go. I can't believe it. Can't believe I broke my mic there, guys. Listen, if you are wondering once again where we got that um, diamond sweet fish from before we start once again. Big up John Johnston on the official Discord servers. Join the official Discord servers for reasons like this, because this I get the information from you guys in the official Discord servers, then get out and try and record a video for the guys that aren't in the official Discord servers, begging you to join the official Discord servers. But if you are wondering where we got this guy from, it is from... Um, if you reference the starter outpost, i zoom right out so you see where it is. Reference the starter outpost there, guys. Come far, far north, far north, and the top right-hand lake there, guys. Go to the... Um, Sakaki stop. I don't know if I'm saying that right. Get on the jetter and come down to this location here. Arrive here at noon, John Johnson says. And um, and yeah, best of luck, guys. Leave a little like, leave a comment, subscribe to the channel, and I'll catch you on the stream next time, guys. Peace.